connected. Hey everybody, welcome to Woodsman Adventures. Today I'm going to be doing a brake pad install from CRFs only. These are the Galfer brake pads. Uh, i got a set of the front brake pads and the rear, so I'll be doing that in one video. I also have the uh, Galfer brake lines from crfsonly.com and uh, the front and rear, so I'll be doing a video on that on a separate video, so that will be up next, but uh, right now we're going to install the brakes. Then I'll do that on a different video, uh, replacing the brake lines and replace my brake fluid. So let's go ahead and get started on the brake pad install and uh, get it going. All right, first off here on the right side under the seat here, I'm going to remove this. I got a cover on mine. If you don't have the cover, it'd be the same way, um, except for I just removed this reservoir for the rear brake, and then I'll suck some fluid out of here to give myself some. Uh, room for when I uh, push the calipers back to make room for the new pads then the brake fluid will come up into here and not run over all over the bike because you don't want to get the brake fluid all over your paint so uh, I'll remove this take the two screws out and then I'll take a syringe that I have and suck out uh, the brake fluid and save it all right this is where I'm gonna need an eight millimeter wrench to remove this even if you don't have this cover on here, you still want to remove this so you'll be able to easily get to the screws on the top of the reservoir to take the top off. Two Phillips screws right here. Okay, I'll remove these two screws. Be careful not to tilt it too much and let your brake fluid spill out everywhere. Try to keep your parts to where you know how they go back in there. I just uh, try to keep them all together as I pull it up out of there. And I can just put it back the same way. Put this back together here. You can see this. And then smash this little boot down inside like that so when you put it back down it won't uh, push all your brake fluid out when you put it back in there. Now I just take my syringe and suck most, most of the brake fluid out of it. I'll just leave the syringe like this and keep the brake fluid in it uh, to put back in there. Of course I'll be replacing all my brake fluid when I replace the brake lines in the next video. Okay now we can just leave this where it's at and we'll go down to the brake pads. Okay back here on the rear caliper I want to uh, remove this 12 millimeter bolt here. Put the caliper on. Like so. Alright, hopefully you can see this. This is your ABS line here. So you don't you want to be careful and not break it. But if you'll go on the brake line side and pull these little tab this one up and there's another one in front of that you push down that will release it from your brake line so it won't be in the way and just kind of set it over here out of the way so you don't damage it then we'll remove this allen bolt right here all right this front allen bolt we're removing is a number six loosen it up should be able to just spin it out here with your fingers after you loosen it up Hang on to that. If there's no grease on this pin, you want to make sure there's grease on it when you put it back in there. Same way, uh, that way it can slide good. Don't get uh, corroded up for your brakes to work. There was a little bit of grease on the ends. I just smeared it onto the shaft part of that pin. Now I can raise the caliper right up off there. And there is the brake pads exposed. You can see my brake pads after there's 13,000 miles, but they're pretty much wore down. They're not metal to metal yet, and you definitely don't want them to run down metal to metal before you change them out. Okay, so this is the way I do it. Having my brake pads in here, I want to pry them apart, pry the pads apart, which will push this plunger back in here, which will push your brake fluid back up the brake line 
into your reservoir and that's why you want to empty the brake fluid out of your reservoir so it don't run over and spill onto your paint everywhere so now I'll take this screwdriver between the two pads hold on to the caliper firmly and just push it back easily if it ain't stuck it shouldn't be too hard to go back and I push it back all the way till it stops like that and then there'll be plenty of room to put my new pads on here okay now we're going to remove this top bolt here this pin this is the pin that the pads set on and slide on um, it, it's easier to actually loosen this while it's still bolted on the caliper but uh, the caliper still bolted on but anyway we should be able to loosen it no problem yeah remove this pin and you can see how wore down those pads are hopefully they're not metal to metal but boy it wouldn't have been too long they would have been just to uh, show you the difference here between the turn them where they're the same here between the new pad and the old pad you can see how much thicker the new pad is and how worn down these actually are okay one thing you want to do is look at your pads and you can see that the pad the factory pad has an anti rattle shim on here that keeps your brakes from rattling you want to just easily peel that off and the little gasket like that goes behind it's a little spacer or gasket and we're just going to set it right back on the new brake pads snap it on just like that same way with the other one we'll snap this off snap it on to the new brake pad like so now this bolt I want to clean it up so it's uh, not got any grime or grit on it and I take a little I take a little bit of grease some people don't but I very lightly put grease on that there's not much at all just some waterproof grease very very light and on there's an o-ring on the end here and uh, make sure there's grease on that little o-ring right there but just a very light amount because you don't want the grease coming off this getting onto your brake pads okay now we will take the new pads set, set them back up here in place Slide our pin back in. Like so. We'll run this bolt down, but we'll tighten it after we get the caliper bolted back on the bike. Now just make sure the pads are apart. And then hold it, set it back over, over your disc line up your holes okay one thing I do want you to notice is the front of the pad when you put this caliper in the front of this pad on both sides will set in this notch you want to make sure that it sets on there when you put it in if you do everything will fit right back in place real good we'll put our front bolt back in our pin I should say There is a rubber boot that this goes through. You need to make sure it goes through that rubber boot smoothly and that you don't tear the rubber boot up when putting that in there. Okay, now we'll put the rear bolt back in.
Bring that hand tight. I'm going to tighten this rear Allen bolt. Tighten the 12 millimeter. Now I don't tighten these real tight, but I will, I'll go back around on all these and check in my book, make sure I torque them to specs with a torque wrench. So I'm not going to tighten them real tight right now. All right, and don't forget to put your clips back on here that hold your ABS line. So we just snap the bottom one under and the top one over, like so. Okay, now I just put my brake fluid back in here. It should be exactly the right amount because it's what it came in there, what it came with factory. right to the upper line. Now we take the top, make sure it's all clean before you put it in there. You don't want to get no dirt inside this reservoir. Set your screws back in there and tighten them back down. I want to wipe off any excess brake fluid off of here, make sure I'm not got none of my paint. Make sure my screws are snug. Uh, of course I have a cover on mine so I'll put my cover back on. My 8mm bolt. Okay, because of the way I've done this, I did not break a brake line loose or anything, so I did not allow any air to get in my brake system, so it shouldn't require any bleeding at all. I filled this back up with the brake fluid to come out of it, out of the reservoir, and now before you take off and ride the bike, you always want to take the pedal and pump your brakes back up. It usually only takes a few pumps like right there, it's back up to normal again. But if you take off riding without doing that, the first time you hit your brakes, you're not going to have no brakes. So always, when you do this, make sure that you have pedal before you take off riding. Make sure you have good firm brake pedal. So that's it on the rear. We'll move to the front. Okay, I apologize for the lighting. It's probably not too good right here in this part. But uh, on the front, we're going to do exactly the same thing. This is the front reservoir with your up here on your brake lever. Uh, we're going to take the bolts out of here. Basically, it's the same thing you did on the rear, just doing it on the front. Okay, on the front, you want to do just like I did on the rear. And the little boot, make sure it's pushed down in here flush uh, down inside so when you put it back in there, you don't push brake fluid out all over, your, all over your bike and on your paint. Okay, I'm going to take this reservoir here, same way with my syringe. Suck the brake fluid out of it. And whenever you do this, one caution is, same way on the rear, do not hit your brake lever at all. Same way on the rear. Whenever you suck this brake fluid out of here, do not hit your brake lever. No need for you to ever hit it. You don't want to introduce any air into the system. So there we'll save our brake fluid so we can put it back in when we're done. Okay, now we'll move down there to the calipers and change the front brake pads. All right, on the front, we're going to be installing Galfer brake pads on the front also from crfsonly.com. Um, the front pads on this thing are not wore out. They're actually pretty good still but uh, I went ahead and replaced the rear go ahead and replace the front anyway and I can put these back for emergency if I don't have a set and they I noticed that they're wore on down the road I could put them back on but for now we're gonna go ahead and replace them with Galfers 
So we remove these 14 millimeter bolts here. There's one on top, one on bottom. I apologize for the lighting. The lighting here on this front part of my shop is not very good. The rear is a lot better. So anyway, we break these loose. Top and bottom. As I do on some things, I'm going to show you replacing these, but not show you when I replace the other side because it is identical, it's just on the other side. So, no need in showing a video of both sides. Take the bolts out, careful and pull the caliper back. You can twist it around here and see your brake pads and how much they're wore. Uh, they're not wore out, but they, they're a little more worn than the new Galfers, so uh, we're going to do this just like I did the front. This thing has four pistons, two on this side, two on this side, so you be sure when you pry these back that we get uh, all the pistons pushed back. And also, I never pry on uh, the new brake pads. Just uh, easy, so you don't tear these up, but always pry on the old brake pads if you're going to do it. Make sure all four pistons are back, and, and what we're doing here is we're pushing that brake fluid back up to the uh, front master cylinder in the reservoir up there, just like we did on the rear. Okay, now when we replace the front pads, uh, it's not required. We don't have to remove any bolts as far as holding the pads in like we did on the rear. We just take these pads, pull them like this. Like this, they'll pull out. Same way at the other side. Just be careful. Pull them out like so. Take the new pads. And you, there's a sp spring in here that is, is holds tension on this, so when you push them in, push down that spring, it snaps in just like that. Same way on this pad right here. Line it up where it's straight. Push it down. Push it down, get the bottom of the pad in first. Push the pads in just like that. Now our pads are in there, all lined up nice, and ready to go back on. So actually fairly simple to me the front on this thing except for the being two sets is easier than the rear put my bolts back in I'll tighten them down and I'll after I get the other side done then I'll go ahead and torque them down Okay, we'll move to the other side. I'll do that. Uh, I won't video that part, but then we'll move up top and put our brake fluid back in, finish it up. All right, I got my uh, uh, brake pads on the right side installed. Got uh, everything torqued. I'm ready to put my brake fluid back in here. I also moved my camera and I got a better angle with light for the top, uh, putting this back in. But uh, we'll go ahead and put the brake fluid in to come out. And just like the rear, because it come out of there, it should be exactly the right amount. So it come in at factory. It looks like it's a little high, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump this brake uh, lever slowly, so I don't. If you pump it hard, you might blow, blow brake fluid back out of here. I want to pump it slowly and uh, spread the calipers back out because this is just like the rear if you was to take off without pumping this uh, lever first squeezing it a few times and take off you won't have no front brakes the first time you get your brakes so always want to uh, work the lever a few times till you build up and if I do this my brake fluid will go down uh, so when I put the cap on it don't spill out everywhere all over the bike because that brake fluid will eat the paint off there we go, now I'm getting pedal back, or I should say lever. It's got a good feel, solid now, and the brake fluid levels drop, so now I can put my cap back on. Cover back on just like it came off. Put 
put the two screws in it. You don't want to tighten these down so tight that the next time you get them off you have an extremely hard time getting them off and you round your Phillips out. They actually don't take that much. Snug them down real good and then just give them a good tightening but don't, don't grab a hold of your hand and put the muscle to it. Like so. And I'll take my rag here, wipe off any excess brake fluid, and we're good to go. So uh, that's a Galfer front, front and rear brake pad install for the Africa Twin uh, from CRFs only is where these came from. So I'll put a link in the description below where you can get them. Uh, Galfer makes extremely good high performance pads and uh, for your motorcycle of any type um, but uh, all your CRFs you can get all your stuff at crfsonly.com and uh, he has a big selection also the the next video I'll be making is the full set front and rear Galfer braided steel uh, stainless steel brake lines so I'll be doing that install and when I'm at it I'll be replacing this brake fluid with some dot four maximum brake fluid so uh, look forward to that video coming up here pretty soon. Thanks for watching Woodsman Adventures, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Click that thumbs up, okay?